Hey folks, good morning. Welcome to the rooftop. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, Saturday morning in July here in Nashville and it's still not hot yet. Yesterday it was like 96 degrees, so I've uh, got to go out of town for work tomorrow and wanted to get a quick brew day in before I left so they can be fermenting while I'm, I'm gone uh, on this work trip. So today I'm going to be brewing a Munich Hellas and I'm going to bring you all along with me. Okay, here we go. So we're going to draw some strike water. I've got the, um, my water that I use coming out of the, the house and goes through this carbon filter here to remove chlorine. Goes through that tube there into the return and we are filling up the, uh, the boil kettle to heat up our, our strike water. Uh, one thing about these, if, if you decide to use one of these filters, uh, run your water slowly through it because if you run it too fast, it's just not going to do a very good job uh, filtering. So we got our strike water filled up. We're going to do our uh, mineral additions here, a little calcium chloride, a little gypsum. And also, some lactic acid. I use brewing water to calculate my mineral additions. Get the Inkbird <clears throat> IHT 6X. It's actually the 2X because I've only got two probes, but uh, in the app it calls it 6X. And what I'm doing here is I'm circulating the um, strike water through here, and then of course I've got the thermal well installed, and it's telling me what the temperature is. Now I can connect to this via Bluetooth. What I do a lot of times is I'll go downstairs and uh, you know, spend time with my family while the strike water is heating up, and then I can set an alarm on the app that tells me when the strike water has reached its temperature. So it's just a way to make the brew day a little bit uh, simpler and uh, not have to be babysitting strike water. All right, we get to our strike water temp. We're gonna do our mash. I like to do a mash in a bag. I used to do the false bottom thing, but I just found this to be a whole lot easier. I'm all about simplicity. Bill. Here we got 10 pounds of uh, Wireman Pilsner and Continental Pilsner malt. We got uh, 12 ounces of Munich and 4 ounces of Melanoid. Turn our pump on. Pump that strike water out of the kettle up into the mash tun. Of course, we got our grains. You can start to see the water coming in. I'm just going to start stirring this guy. It smells amazing. Looking for any clumps. Looking pretty good. Now I'm doing a full. Uh, full mash. This is a five gallon batch so I can easily fit all my needed water in here. So it just makes it really simple. Alright, so we look like we're in good shape. I'm going to put the lid on this guy, let it sit. Of course I've got my thermal well in there that I can use to uh, measure the temps as we go along here. And of course, plug that into the ink bird as well to monitor those temperatures over time. So it looks like we've got right about what we wanted on our strike temp, maybe a little over. Um, wanted it at about 149, 150, and uh, it looks like we got pretty close. So uh, good stuff there. All right, we're going to take a quick measurement here. See how we did. And that pH up top stops blinking, then we have a stable reading. And we're 
little bit high on our temperature, 76. You want this at room temperature, but uh, I think we're close enough. You know, optimal range here is five between 5.2 and 5.4, and it looks like we nailed it at 5.28. So while we are uh, mashing, I'm going to uh, clean the fermenter now. All my fermenters are um, full right now, so I've actually got some sanitizer down here that I typically just store. <clears throat> so I'm gonna actually just shake this up and I'm gonna ferment inside one of these kegs. So the way I do that is I just take this gas out, place it there, and that's my blow off tube and then put that into some sanitizer. So that's how we're gonna be doing this. So we reached the 60 minute mark and uh, we are ready to run this off into the kettle. So, see there, the work coming through. And then what I do with the bag here is I'm just gonna lift this up a little and let it drain. By the way, it looks like we lost about, uh, well, it went away, but it was a 147. So it looks like we lost, you know, about four degrees over that period of time. Um, so, yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to grab this guy here. Lift him up. And you can see when I lift it up, boy, it really starts to flow fast. Okay, so we're running the rest of this off. Just about empty there. And it actually looks like we have well, close to All right, got a nice vigorous boil going here, so we're gonna add the hop spider there. And then for the Hellas, for the uh, Munich Hellas, we're using uh, German Holler Tau, one ounce at 60 minutes. And gonna add one more flavor addition. At the end. time for our last hop addition, our five minutes, we're going to do a half ounce of the Hallertau Middle Fruit. There we go. Stir that guy up a bit. I'm trying to let this pump run for the last few minutes here to help sanitize it. I frequently have issues where it cavitates or I lose so much temperature that my boil stops, which looks like kind of what's happening right now, but we're almost done, so we're still you know, maybe just below boiling here, so almost done. Okay, flame out time. Cut that off. Stop the boil. Get the water basically run gonna run that hot water it's running through the chiller um, back through in there so that I can actually use that for cleaning up so put that 10 gallons in there and then the rest will run off disconnect this here we go throttle this <clears throat> getting down to pitching temp pretty quick. So you see here we're you know about 82 degrees not getting down to uh, pitching temps for a logger you know down to you know 55 50 something like that so this is one of the challenges I have with using a plate chiller is that you can't necessarily uh, you know once it's once it's flowing through there and you've got the, the, the temp you've got the temp uh, you know one issue I think is the hose that I'm using probably could be a, a much larger diameter to get more uh, water through there more quickly so that may be one of the things that I try um, in a future in a future brew
All right, and there we are. All finished up and everything is in the, the fermentation chamber. I had to wait a few hours to pitch the yeast uh, because, you know, as you saw, it was at about 82 going into the fermenter. Uh, so I had to wait a few hours for it to cool off. It, it only got down to about 75 and I went ahead and pitched it. I just didn't want to wait more than a few hours uh, before pitching the yeast. And, you know, as you can see, I got that set at the top there at 50 degrees. So uh, we're going to let this guy ferment for couple of weeks and then carbonate it and then give it a taste. So it's been about three weeks since I brewed this beer. Uh, the Munich Hellas. It's, uh, it's already looking really beautiful. It's clearing out really nicely. I did find this with gelatin a couple of days ago before I carbonated it. Now it's only been three weeks. Um, I know this beer is going to just continue to get even better and better as it lagers in my uh, keyser over there. But I did want to give it a quick taste so I could get this video out. Um, it, uh, this beer took, so when I got back from that trip, it had been about six days I was away. At that point, I did reduced the uh, temperature, or I, I'm sorry, I rose the temperature on the fermenter about seven or eight degrees and, and for 12 hours, and then I did that again for another 12 hours, and then left it at uh, 66, I think, or 64, 66, until it reached uh, final gravity, which actually got really low. It started off at uh, 1041, and got all the way down to uh, 1006, so really, really dried out uh, nicely, uh, or attenuated nicely. Uh, I made it a 4.8% beer, I believe. Uh, so anyway, let's give it a taste. Let's see what we think. So in the nose, I'm getting some slightly spicy, maybe uh, maybe a little herbal from the, the Hallertau middle fruit, that um, flavor addition, or aroma addition, rather, we added at the end. Smell a little bit of the malt uh, on the nose. Um, let's give it a taste. Really nice bready, malty flavor. Um, it's got some sweetness. It, it dries off nice at the end, but it does have a little sweetness there in the middle, the mid palate. Uh, but it's balanced out nicely by just really mild bitterness from that hollow towel addition we did at the 60 at the bittering addition. I think just you know a little grainy from the Pilsner. Uh, malt in there, but just a really nice beer overall. It's nice and tasty. Very, very drinkable. Um, mm. This is a good beer. I like this one. I'll definitely brew this one again. If you want this recipe, you can check it out on my website at welcome to the rooftop.com. Uh, and um, hope you enjoyed uh, this video.